Welcome back to AFTV everyone, welcome to the Arsenal versus Southampton preview, lots to talk about because Arsenal after two winless games, two draws from tuning up in both positions, Arsenal need to bounce back and I'm here with you Robbie to talk about it. Yeah listen um, this is a massive game, I know everybody keeps talking about Man City, if we go there and got to get a win, get a point, it will mean nothing if we don't win this game. This game, and we've got to look at every game that's right in front of us, and this game for me is absolutely huge. Arsenal have to win this game against Southampton. They're bottom of the table, they're in dire straits at the moment. We've got to take advantage of this. And it's the first time for a while that Arsenal are actually kicking off and trying to put points on the board before Man City even kick a ball. And I think, look, while you don't want to read into whether them playing first, you know, puts any pressure on us and all that, um, I think Arteta might have even said that it doesn't really bother them, which I can imagine is the case. It is a strange one, because it's a Friday night game, 8pm here at our beautiful Emirates Stadium, 60,000 seater capacity as always. And, you know, ask for the opportunity to just start the weekend right and give themselves a really good amount of time to enjoy what's hopefully a win before that Man City game comes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a massive opportunity. I mean, in a way, I'm kind of glad that this game's on a Friday night, you know mm. what I mean? Um, a night game, so you're guaranteed a fantastic atmosphere in the place. And, um, you know, like you said, if we get a positive result now, you know, you just put our feet up for the weekend and get full preparation ready for the game against Manchester City. Of course, Man City not in Premier League action. They're playing in the FA Cup against Sheffield United. We yeah. all expect them to get that job done. Um, but, you know, just get our, get our job done. Hopefully a, a, a really big win, a really, you know, um, win that really restores confidence back in the team and then mm. just be ready for that big one. But. I just hope that the team are not looking ahead of this game. Yeah. This game first. So Southampton, that, we've got to win it. And that was a bit of a problem I felt going into the Man City game two months ago, where you remember the results before that, a draw with Brentford, a defeat with Everton. It felt like they were focusing too much, or, or it felt like the, there was always that in the back of their mind, Man City is coming on that Wednesday night. And actually, it wasn't until we got that out of the way that then you saw Arsenal put seven wins in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know... The focus has to be on game by game. The wind is really whipping up here, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. The focus has to be on game by game, right? Because it's almost like if you don't win the game that's in front of you, the next game means nothing. This is where we're at now in, in, in this stage of the season. And um, I, think, I think it's good to be back home. Yeah. It's good to be back home, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I a lot of people well. forget that, you know, the last two games have been very, very difficult um, away days, you know, Liverpool's a really, really tough place to go to, as we know, at Anfield. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, West Ham, even though we've got, you know, we won there last year, they always give us a tough game. Yeah. So what happened at those places happened now. Yeah. It's about Arsenal getting back to winning ways. It's as windy as I've ever seen at the Emirates. <laughs> Let's hope we blow Southampton away. Uh, oh, no, uh, I'm not a comedian for a reason. Uh, let's have a look at the state of play. Arsenal top of the table on 74 points. Southampton at the very bottom. It is first versus last. But Jeez. Southampton do have some quality in the team. We know we can't write anyone off. You know what? 10, 15 years ago, you could have said, oh, we're playing bottom of the league at home. Brilliant. We, we're going 5 nil, 6 nil, whatever. But... And I know Southampton haven't been that great this year, but we are on a stage where anyone in the Premier League, even Southampton, who are you know, having as bad a season as I've seen since they've come into the Premier League, you still think you can't write them off to cause us some problems. They're fighting for their lives, James. Yeah. They're fighting for their lives. And when, when teams are fighting for their lives, right, one or two things will happen. Um, one, they could, you know, fold. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we could go get off to a great start and they can just uh, be like, oh, yeah. we're, we're just never going to win this game and fold. Or, like what happened at West Ham, they fight. Yeah. They fight with all their lives. They like, you know, this, this, this could mean next year I'm in the championship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in the championship. So they fight with everything to try and get out of it. So, mm -hmm. and, and I expect Southampton to fight, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, they've got a very, very poor record here. Um, they've never beaten us. They've never beaten us here at the Emirates. So, you know, we, this is a massive opportunity for us. But as we saw with West Ham, you cannot be complacent 
when you're playing these teams down near the bottom? Because I felt we were complacent in that game I think we were. once we went 2 0 up. And that's why we ended up conceding the two goals. We weren't complacent against Liverpool. Yeah, it was just like, it happens. It's Anfield. It was a tough game in the end. They can come back. Yeah. But the West Ham one, we were complacent. But we've just got to put that behind us now. Mm -hmm. Happens in run-ins. These things happen. Yeah. It doesn't always just go, oh, win game, 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 game. It doesn't always work like that. Yeah. So that's happened now. How the team have got to look on it. We're still on a great run. We're still unbeaten. We're going back home in front of our own fans and we're going to go out there to win this game. I agree. Arsenal in the last five, obviously that 3 0 win at Fulham, beat Palace 4 1, beat Leeds 4 1, really getting the goals in. Goals hasn't really, hasn't hasn't really been, a, been problem. a problem. A 2 2 draw, Liverpool and West Ham, as we mentioned. Southampton's last five, I mean, they've only picked up one point in their last five, the rest all defeats. You know who that was against? What, the, the point? Yeah. Spurs? <laughs> Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Spurs, right. so they got that last minute um, equaliser, but that's a warning. Even Theo Walcott knocked it yeah, yeah. in. But yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's the warning I'm saying because even that game, I remember I was watching it, mm -hmm. to be honest, Spurs were cruising it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Obviously, they, you remember they were. that was the Conte meltdown, wasn't it? They were cruising the game. They were. And again, complacency, took their foot off the pedal. Yeah. And a team that's fighting for their lives came back. Very so, true. And rem remember, a point for, him, for them here. It'd be like they won the game and it'd be like a defeat for us. So we've got to win this game. I agree. We've got four wins in our last 10 against Southampton, which isn't as good as a record as I might have thought. But a lot of that is because of our away form. Away FA form. Cup, away, when away we, and all that. They're a tricky team when you play them away. Yeah. But at home here, we, our record has been really, really good against them over the years. Um, we obviously did get that big win against them at the Emirates last season. Now, I remember it kind of mirrors a little bit the situation now, where if you remember, we, we lost away at Everton, we lost away mm. um, at, I think it was Man United. And I'll be honest, I was thinking, oh, you know, is Arteta really the man? Mm. And the, the team responded with a really good 3 0 win against Southampton. We're in a similar situation where two away games didn't go the way we hoped. It looked like maybe we were falling away from our aspirations from the season but it's another opportunity to bounce back in terms of players on the pitch to talk about I mean let's start with injury news Saliba again I've just got question marks yeah. here we have no idea what's happening with William Saliba nor do we really know anything on Zinchenko other than it was a little bit of a tight muscle they decided not to risk it against West Ham mm. I think had that been the final game of the season I think he probably would have played yeah. uh, you know yeah. I think it's more they're looking at the run-in um, Tommy Asu and Elneny are both out with longer term injuries um, but it leaves us wondering about the starting eleven, doesn't it? And you yeah. know, essentially, what we do there. Some are saying Jesus may get a rest. You know, what are you looking to do differently? With well, the starting I, I, I wouldn't rest Jesus. You know, what I mean, um, Jesus is on form at the moment. You know, what I mean, um, he's been scoring goals. Yeah, yeah, know? that's true. So why are we resting him for? You know, what I mean, um, three in his last three. He's right? had enough yeah. rest. You know, yeah. the amount of time he's been out. Um, he looks sharp against West Ham. I um, a lot of people were surprised when he came off. I think a lot of that might have been managing him because he's been he's out, been out for a while but for me in this game Jesus starts you mm -hmm. know what I mean he's chomping at the bit every game you can see it right so for me I would start Jesus 100% in the game mm -hmm. the interesting one in this one what a lot of people have been saying to me has been about Saka yeah they've been like um oh he looks tired oh he looks it looks like he needs a rest I don't again I don't agree with that you know what I mean a player can have a couple of Offish games, you know what yeah. I mean? It happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, it happens, you know what I mean? And I think that's all it is. And um, I, f I think, especially after missing that penalty last week, he'll want to get back into action. He'll want to play. So for me, Saka's got to start for me. I mean, yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about switching it up and, and that. Um, but Saka has to start for me. And Martinelli, he scored, he's scoring as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the forward players have been doing their job. I know, that's the thing. We've got They've two goals at West Ham. We've got two goals um, at Liverpool. They were all chipping with goals and assists and here, here and there. And I, I kind of know what you mean. It's more the clean sheet that we're looking at here. It's can yeah. the defence, you know, do their job? Because I know Rob Holding and Kieran Tierney are good players to bring in. But you do. Th it is frustrating that we're going into a run-in mm. without Saliba and Zinchenko. Yeah, it is it's very... Um, very very frustrating because basically you know especially with the Saliba one basically mm -hmm. all season we've had a settled yeah. um, pair in there you mm -hmm. know what I mean it's been every game it's been Saliba and it's been you know um, Gabriel and mm -hmm. they've been absolutely amazing amazing partnership and then all of a sudden in some of these important games now we're having to change that yeah um, and despite the fact that I don't think Rob Holding has been 
you know, particularly, you know, um, bad or anything, you are disturbing what's been one of the best partnerships, centre-back partnerships mm -hmm. in the Premier League. Yeah. And, you know, so we miss Saliba, we really do. And I'm, I would love to see Saliba back for the, um, for the Man City game. But I think if he's not quite ready for this one, you don't really want to risk him or maybe well, he gets reports, a run out or something, but, you know. Reports he'll risk his season for the Man City game. Yeah, yeah, well, so report, say that again? That he'll risk his season for the Man City game and well, he will play it knowing yeah. that, it, you know, it could mean that he doesn't play again this season. Well, you know, sometimes you've got to take these risks. You know, um, it's a back problem. And, you know, back problems, you know, they're, no, they're notorious in that, you know, you could be all right or, you, you know, you could, you could feel something. So, yeah. but it would be great to have him back. It has been a bit annoying to be, to me yeah. missing him in this running. But listen, we've got a, we've got a weather these, you yeah, know, yeah. These, these things happen. These things happen in a running, you know what I mean? It's a lot of games in a season and the wear and tear starts to tell. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, but. I'm desperate for us to keep a clean sheet in this game, win the game with a clean sheet. It would be so amazing to do that because even even before the couple of draws, we've not been keeping clean sheets at home. No, no. And that's been a I bit agree. of a worry. And final thoughts on, uh, before we get your predictions, Southampton, players to watch. Obviously, we know that there are players. Theo Walcott has had many, many years of knowing how to put the ball in the back of the net. They've got other players. They signed Sulemana, players like that. But... Who, who are you keeping an eye? For me, it's more in midfield I'm keeping an eye. Yes, um, you know, they've, they've, they've got some decent players in midfield. Of course, they can't play Ainsley, yeah. uh, Maitland-Niles, because he, he's on, on loan for us. You know, I think I probably will go with Theo, because, you know, Theo will be returning back here. And, you know... He scored at the Emirates as Southampton Yeah, and, 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 and he's... Um, He's been, he's, you know, he's coming sort of out from the cold and he's, he's looked decent. So, Theo's one to watch, but of course... The big one that we have to watch, I think, in these games for Southampton is James Ward-Prowse, mm -hmm. you know? Um, if he gets on the ball, mm -hmm. like, so in other words, we give away too many corners and that, mm -hmm. his delivery's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. We know what he's like for free kicks, mm -hmm. right? Anything, any free kick one, and they'll be looking to win free kicks in and around the box, he's dangerous at as well. It's his set-piece play is probably amongst, apart from De Bruyne, is probably the best in the Premier League. So yeah. we have to keep a close eye on him. And also, we can't be giving away lots of stupid fouls around the box and things like that. It's the sort of thing that Southampton will be looking for. Yeah. You know, and Southampton are a team, they've got a lot of legs in their team. They, yeah. I, I do think, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how much they press us. But they are quite a young team, energetic team that will press us in that they way. They are a young team, yeah. So, but Ward Prowse, we've got to be careful. And that's again, comes down to defending. Mm -hmm. to not give away stupid free kicks, stupid fouls, too many corners, things like that, which then bring Southampton into the game. I agree. I think that midfield is where they can disrupt us. You know, they've got lots of technical players as well. Ward Prowse, you mentioned, Lavia, Arriba. I like yep. these players. Lavia's Alcaraz a very good has player. just arrived. You know, so we'll keep an eye on Southampton. Let's get your predictions, Robbie. We really need a response and we need some confidence and momentum going into Man City. What kind of result? Are you predicting that will hopefully give us that? I'm predicting um, a 4-1 win to Arsenal. I think we're going to get goals. It's like you said, we've been scoring goals, even despite mm. in the last couple of games. Went 2-0 two, um, two up at Anfield, went 2-0 up at West Ham. We're creating a lot, right? Mm. So I think we'll score goals. I fancy uh, Jesus and Martinelli to be on the score sheet and Saka. Yeah. Um, so, but can we keep a clean sheet? I'm going with us conceding one. I hope I'm wrong on that aspect and that we keep a clean sheet and then just get this win under our belt, get the confidence back. Yeah. Because the confidence would have been knocked a little bit from, you know, um, giving up those 2-0 uh, yeah. leads in the last couple of games. Get the confidence back and get back down to business next week. But let's not look ahead until we've got the job done. Yeah. on Friday night. I went with 3 0 Forever Arsenal. I'm going to stick with that. Let us know your thoughts and your predictions in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to AFTV. Plenty more content coming out ahead of the game and if you're still reacting to what happened in West Ham, all the content is out as well from Bias Premier League to Tactical Insight and all that. And of course, don't forget to go onto the AFTV store. The link is in the description below. London is red. What do you think? Well, we know that already, don't we?
I think we're one point away <laughs> from confirming it or some mad goal difference. Yeah, well, so, yeah. It ain't, ain't going to be Chelsea that catches us, that's for well, sure. Well, that's very true. So go <laughs> ahead and grab your AFTV merch in the link below in the description. We'll see you very soon. Many thanks. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.